Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 29 on the, of the interplanetary voyage of exploration. And <clears throat> for some of you that are following the series, it has only been a few days since the last release, but for me Exodus has actually been well over two and a half months. Um, I just came back from vacation and this is the first episode. So in the last episode we built a uh, uh, dual probe with lifter and we have built a small VTOL plane that we will be doing. Now then, uh, let's see what today's mission will be. If you remember in the previous episode of the Kerbal Engineering I have shown how to build a small VTOL plane and today we will be using the small VTOL plane to visit the polar anomaly on Kerbin. <clears throat> that is the only one of the significant ones that I plan to visit <clears throat> and I wanted to do each one with a new type of plane. So <clears throat> let us see now who would be our pilots. It's been a while so I want to launch it. And I want to have somebody who has a little bit experience, but not too much. And I think for the pilot, I will go with, 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 whom we have. Oh, <clears throat> well, not Edlu. Oh, HMV seems not to have too many um, missions. So I'll, I'll go, I'm going to go with him as a pilot. Then for the scientists, uh, let's see. Hmm, I'm gonna go with Naily probably, or Mario. I'd rather take Mario as a scientist. Okay, <clears throat> that brings us to our plane. So I'm showing most of this episode again in time acceleration, same as for the Tatanjab, because. Yeah, you don't need to see me really flying for a long time in straight direction. I will still slow down the time acceleration for any interesting stuff like this takeoff. So RCS on, SAS on, uh, setting the VTOL mode <coughs> on the K-Fan and I'm using parts from the QuizTech Aero mode. Big shout to this guy who actually made it. It's fantastic. I love it. Now, we have forward K-Fan as a forward VTOL engine and rear two fans as the rear VTOL engines. We have already tested this in the episode of the Kerbal Engineering so we know it works and now it's just a matter of spooling up <coughs> the engines and to take off. Okay and we are taking off. Gear up and time to engage the horizontal thrusters. <clears throat> I found this blend to be a good mix because you get enough uh, horizontal speed and then you switch your engines to the horizontal mode and turn, on the K turn off the K-fan, which completely transfers the plane into a horizontal flight. All right. <clears throat> and now time to go to our anomaly ice cap waypoint. By the way, for you, those of you who might be wondering, I'm using waypoint manager uh, mod in this um, in this playthrough, and this is a 0 0.90 playthrough. Um, just for some of them might be asking. <clears throat> Now, to my knowledge, uh, these procedural wings that I used on this plane are not up to date for the 1.0. Alternative, you could use B9 procedural wings. Okay, uh, we have aligned and time to set to 4 time times acceleration <coughs> for a smoother transition. By the way, my frame rate when playing was horrid. I was having 6 frames per second. Probably due to the amount of mods and probably due to everything else I'm doing at the same time, so yeah. I figured I should transfer the fuel forward to maintain a stability, which is great. Yeah, now the plane should be much more stable, except it's not. And as you might have guessed, 
<coughs> my engine has burnt out. So I need to first get out of this spin, restart the engines, and hopefully get Mario and HMV out of trouble. <coughs> I have every I have every confidence in HMV. He is an experienced pilot, which just occasionally thing tends to get things horribly wrong. Uh, by the way, HMV is a co fellow YouTuber who has also great KSP content. Check him out. He has really fun uh, series. Now, let's see if we can stop this cartwheel. Uh, I'm really struggling. Oh, despite the fact that I have these RCS thrusters that are supposed to make plane more maneuverable... Uh, I'm sorry. Um, it is still difficult because the plane is still a little bit as heavy. Okay, so I managed to get the nose down. Perfect. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And yes, um, for those of you who have watched the Kerbal Engineering, I was, uh, I was ranting about the vertical stabilizers to use instead of um, uh, wing tips. And uh, yes, in, in this plane, those are fixed. So those are correct ones. If I had the other ones, I would have been in serious trouble. <clears throat> okay, good. The fortunate thing, unlike when we were testing for the Tomb of the Tutankhamun, we didn't need to eject <coughs> our Kerbals. Which I'm sure they are very appreciative of, because HMV is already had this spinning like crazy. Probably as a result of the previous deadly cartwheel that we had. Okay. <coughs> I'm trying to maintain a sweet spot around 20, 20,000 meters because uh, just basically bouncing off on the top of the atmosphere uh, where I can maintain some 900 or 1000 meters per second um, to reduce the travel time because we still have around 700 kilometers to go. And I'm just checking that I'm on the right way. Yeah, I am. Great. Now we're back to four times time acceleration. And I'm just checking how the fuel drains, if it's equal, because I'm worried to get again uh, the cartwheel of death. But now since I have turned off the, um, the, the other two turbines, that are the VTOL turbines, I'm hoping that the intake air consumption will be low enough to maintain um, the two turbojets and the turbojets are usually performing very well at the high altitude so yeah okay around 23 well I w shouldn't go much higher than that because the controls tend to go nuts And our distance is reducing, which I'm very thankful for. I don't know, by the way, this is e, uh, environmental visual enhancements in uh, 0 0.90, and sadly, I have some, and this is OpenGL, so I don't have this beautiful refinements. But time to turn on the, our BTDT anomaly scanner. Oh, well, we get re-entry effects. Oh, yeah, I'm below 17, almost below 17. Okay, pull up, pull up. Time for another hop. And let's have a just quick, quick save, just in case the Kraken hits. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, so, yeah, I was just lamenting since I'm using the OpenGL. I get this sharp transition between the clouds and the upper atmosphere but well you can have all mods and everything on the plus side in the background you can see a beautiful aurora as we are approaching the poles I really love that effect thanks to whoever made it three hundred kilometers to go <coughs> and I'm thinking I will try to see if I can land as a VTOL because simply we are 
having a veto plane it would be shame not to land as a veto and probably on the way back I'll land it like a regular plane assuming that we land on the runway we'll see that's my plan at the moment by the way this is the first time I'm going towards the anomaly so I have no knowledge exactly where it should be I mean I have seen one video where I have some idea where it should be but I guess we'll just have to come and see. Okay, 150 kilometers and I got some science. Great. Always appreciative of the extra science. 125 kilometers and I think it's time to start our descent. Um, descent down and because I don't think we would be able to see the anomaly from here. So uh, we have to go hit the deck, so to say. <coughs> yeah, as I was saying, this is the first episode after the long pause, which was my vacation for two and a half months. So forgive me if I'm not 100% up to date. Hopefully by the next episode I will be. Uh, and I will add a couple of you guys who have requested to be on the um, on the show I will add you in probably for the next episode as well okay let's check the scan set it's over here I was hoping that I would be able to see the anomaly co as compared to my aircraft but okay maybe not environmental visual enhancements and um, I think this is astronomer pack beta that I'm using are clouding my view from where I hope to see the plane. By the way, I'm a little bit sorry that this is kind of turning so quickly. This is four times times acceleration and I was looking around until I find where it's supposed to be. I have a feeling it's going towards that corner, not exactly towards the marker, but to in the direction that I'm flying at the moment where the mountains end. Okay, reducing the speed, switching to VTOL mode, pulling and pulling up the air brakes, hopefully. Yeah, air brakes, VTOL mode, and the one thing that you should probably do when you want to land as a VTOL, you want to turn off the horizontal engines, which I didn't do. Ah, there's the anomaly that we are looking for. Okay. Now, I'm not sure that I will stop in time. I must say I'm very bad when it comes to precision vertical landing. Um, that's something I still have to work on a lot. Okay. Trying to kill my speed. And I only realized that right now I'm using orbital speed. Yeah. Bravo. It's obvious I haven't played this game in a while. Well... Oh, 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 easy, no, 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 okay, and now when I'm going down, I'm monitoring my vertical speed, which is decreasing, but um, what typically happens to me, I slow down, and then I start yo-yoing over the, um, over the landing site, yeah, okay, and now I think I have given too much thrust, and, whoa, well, alternator failure. Thank you, dang it. Well, so far I've been had pretty much luck with dang it because it didn't do horrific damage. That would be a basically catastrophic to my craft still. It's minor issues, but you never know. There's always the first time. Okay, now let's try land somewhere here and maybe we'll just drive around I'd like to go there but I'm kind of just thinking I'll be happy to land after you guys saw it in time accelerated for you it was 15 minutes for me it was basically almost an hour so let's see okay pitching up okay 19 meters per second I should I'm trying to slow down and then when I change the angle, then my vertical speed increases. Okay, okay, gently, gently. Whoa, not sideways. G. 
gently gently and yes like I said I'm yo-yoing this is what I was been talking about because I come to <coughs> too low then I chicken out and then I press the accelerator a little bit too hard and then I go back up so yeah okay slow down nice and gentle nice and gentle nice and gentle and 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 not again up oh man this is something I have to work on clearly <coughs> let's see mm, and I land at 10 meters per second vertical velocity that's just beautiful okay atmosphere analysis atmospheric pressure scan let's do some science now while we're here let's see uh, uh, uh. anomalous data let's first see what you have to say anomalous signal detected approximately 3.6 kilometers away to the east all right so I have to go to the east magnetometer <coughs> Mystery goo. And seismic scan. Cool. Nice set of science. Time to... <coughs> time to go to visit our anomaly. Let us just first close everything and let us repair our alternator. So, Mario is a scientist, but I'm kind of hoping that he's capable of fixing this, because <clears throat> this is not the 1.0 where only engineers can repair stuff, so, yeah, this is more a um, feature of dang it. So I'm just trying to jump to the fuselage, and no. And now I notice that my thrusters are still working, which is kind of funny. So I'm just going to switch to the plane to turn off the RCS thrusters and yeah, let's take the spare parts. Good, so that we can repair. We only have two spare parts, but I don't think we need many much more. Okay, and okay, ah, yeah, this is why I cannot repair it replace alternator and that's it now <clears throat> one design flaw that I never thought about is I haven't put the ladder on this bugger so I think I'll have to do it the ugly way let's see if I can jump here oh nope I think it's still too high Let's try and get on the nose on the plane, shall we? <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Come on. Hmm. I um, don't think this will work. Well, I don't want to leave my chief scientist here, so let's see if we can find another solution. This is really annoying, by the way. I should have really thought about using the using the ladder. Well, okay, then let's just lower another wheel. I'm happy that these uh, uh, wings are clearly made out of uh, yeah titanium or adamantium. If you're an X if you're an X Men fan, clearly because they cannot break once they hit the ice this easily. All right. Now let us get back into the ship. Yay! Success. Now grab and board yes finally cool now raise the landing gear oh uh oh oops 
Well, this I don't like. Mm, let's try and put all gear down and then all gear up. And this didn't help either. Well, look on the bright side. I'm trying to enable motor, see if I can pull. trying to pull. No, it doesn't work. Well, fortunately, this craft is a VTOL. So, let's just bring it a little bit up. It's got his wheels stuck in ice. Okay, off. Good. Okay, and time for our drive. You see, Given my wonderful skill with the aircraft, despite the fact that I created a VTOL, I couldn't land next to the anomaly even if my own life depended on it. Well, what can you do? Oh, and this would take quite a while. Um, let me think. I have an idea. Well, this is flat, so... Why not? Let us turn on the the engines to help us with the speed a little bit. Unlocking the steering, aiming and yeah. I mean otherwise it would take me forever to get to the anomaly which I don't think is practical. Yeah, 32 meters per second is more than enough. It's 0.1 Mach. So it should be just over the ridge to the right. Slight correction. behind the ridge and yes there we see our anomaly here so time to turn the craft to, towards it and visit it and get all the sweet anomalous data from there it's time to delete the waypoints so we don't get confused these waypoints are very useful for navigation and uh, judging the ETA because especially when I'm doing this series it takes a while to figure out how to go. I hope that today we'll gather enough science that we would be able to launch at a later stage. I'm thinking maybe some start building some stations and stuff. The most important problematic part right now when it comes to our interplanetary voyages are the communications network. It's only valid for Eve, Duna and maybe Dres, but not Jewel. So I will send out the Jewel ships and hopefully by the time they come out of range I would be able to send up at least one satellite that they could all connect to. So that's kind of my plan. Because I don't want to miss the jewel launch window. It will still take a lot of time until they get out of range. So, yeah, that's kind of my rough plan. And then let's see. Okay, what's this? Looks like a down, downed UFO. Wow. Talk about the revelation. Let's see what our anomalous scanner says this appears to be some strange kind of aircraft possibly a research prototype it's also emitting several forms of radiation research craft okay i'd love to get my hands on that research if possible please because 
I mean, just looking from the Kerbal perspective, it got stuck in the polar ice and it's still in one piece. So, yeah. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. I want to have a nice screenshot for the episode. Okay. A little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, a little bit closer. And now turn away and hit the brakes and kill the engines. Great. Okay. Fine. And yes. Wow. We have a couple of screenies there. Now, let us EVA the pilot because I think it's only fair because our Mario scientist already got the chance to EVA so in, it's time to get an EVA report surface sample and to plant a flag beside the anomaly okay there we go take surface sample we already had surface sample, if you remember, from our polar mission that we landed on the ice cap, so... Now we only want to plant a flag, and I want it to look good, so let's see. Come on, HMV, don't let me down. Okay, well, let's call it Polar Anomaly Found text UFOs are real goodness gracious okay actually this is a nice screenshot come on HMV come here I don't bite okay great picture taken time to go back to the aircraft and by now we have perfected the system of getting on the aircraft so let us just quickly switch to the aircraft well not to the you and to you oh okay lower the gear oh sorry raise the gear close the cargo bay And yes, time to go to the time to go to to the cockpit. Okay, and then we will need to go. I still haven't been taking off from an uneven surface in KSP with the VTOL, so I'm thinking that I'll probably gonna go with. Uh, first going to a flat area and then taking off. I, by the way, I found the turbojet engines highly useful, especially when you need to go down the mountain slope or up the mountain slope. Okay, so let us accelerate that. You don't need to me see me hopping over every nook and cranny, I guess. <clears throat> Okay, this is flat enough. And let us just now... Now we're pointing north, so hopefully we should be pointing somewhere a little bit more towards the south. Around there, hopefully. Okay, and that happens because I don't have the maneuver or node, or not maneuver node, but a waypoint. So let's put one on the KSC. Roughly, roughly where the KSC is supposed to be. We don't need the exact location. Okay. And KSC. Cool. Save. And set as set navigation. Activate navigation so we know where it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's on our nav wall. Fine, we are pointing in the right direction. A little bit turning to the right, and yes, we are aligned. Hitting the brakes and getting ready to take this baby off this ice cap. 
which is about time because our polar charge is running out anyway. Or, sorry, electric charge. Enabling VTOL engines. Okay, spooling up, thrust to almost max, lights on, and now thrust to max, and let us go, gear up, turning on the horizontal engines, and let's pick up some speed before we transfer to the horizontal flight mode because we need wings to pick up the lift okay we got it switching the engines and turning off the K fan and we are heading in the right direction so time to time to hit the four times times acceleration Once again, climbing around 20, between 20 and 23,000 meters, which should be our sweet spot, and flying back. I think that's what should, will probably pretty much sum it up for my plane program, at least on Kerbin. So now I'm gonna start focusing a little bit towards orbital and uh, interplanetary missions orbital in terms of building uh, a couple of satellites maybe starting to build a research station or something in Kerbin orbit and which and then after only after that is done I will consider SSTOs because right now I do not need I don't have the need for an SSTO apart from maybe launching a satellite but once we get stations, then reuse becomes a big thing, and then we will want to use SSTOs. Okay, picking up speed, and we are 720 kilometers and dropping. Now you'll notice that I'm flying directly towards the pointer and then I realize, okay, if I'll be going, going directly towards the marker, Kerbin is still rotating, so I figured I need to go a little bit east of it, so I make sure that I hit, don't hit the KSC directly, but that I'm able to make a turn and land like a plane. So. This time I'm hoping not to have funny flippings as I did last time. So four times time acceleration, given the fact that I was playing six frames per second, you get a nice 24 frames per second. Um, yeah. Coming up on over some mountains. And we're already 480, which is a little bit less than a halfway through. I really like how this game looks. And by the way, uh, these RCS engines, uh, I kept them on because they help me maintain stability on the higher altitudes when my where my control surfaces aren't reacting that well. Other than that, I really do not need the RCS intake air thrusters or the horizontal flight. Sorry. I also like. Um, the lightning cockpit, which is also part of the Quistec Aero, it's um, it's a really cool mod pack. You should really try it out if you like planes, and if you're especially if you were missing and trying to do a VTOL, then it's really like on the nose. And our waypoint should be coming over the horizon any time, 240 kilometers away.
Let's see, yeah, aim a little bit ahead of it, okay. One hundred and eighty kilometers. And we can already see in the distance the mountains behind the KSC. And we can see the plains where the KSC is supposed to be located. As well as the hills of the island that is in front of the KSC. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take approach vector towards the island and then make a turn and land on the runway so that's the plan i'm also reducing my speed a little bit because i want to make sure that my uh since i'm descending i also want to save pop a quick save saying that i'm landing just in case the kraken hits if i goof up the landing myself that's something I'm willing to live with. Okay, so HMV and Mario are returning from a mission that took them to the polar region to invest in Anomaly. Their findings were interesting, to say the least. Okay. slightly turning towards the KSC. By the way, to the maker of the Waypoint Manager, I don't know if you can see on the navball there's still an icon. I don't know if this has been fixed in a later version, even though I have deleted the Waypoint. So, yeah. Okay. And we're almost perfectly aligned with the runway. Gear down. And the sun has set. It's a good thing that we brought some extra lights. Those will help us with the landing. And coming up on the runway. And time to hit the brakes. And touchdown. Nice. Nice landing at HMV. This time you perform great. Uh, okay, so, and then I realized I have never locked the front wheel in terms of steering, which is just wonderful. Well, this pretty much brings them home and brings us towards the end of this episode. Um, if you like the episode, please do like the episode and for more KSP content, be sure to hit that subscribe button to the channel. Otherwise, I can I urge you to also check some of my other series like Remote Tech School or uh, KSS Big Bang. Those were done much, much earlier when I was making and therefore some of them might have lesser quality in terms of, in terms of audio. Okay. So yeah, this pretty much brings us to the end. Let's just see what we got. We recovered the plane. 94.7 signs to the total of 270 and the crew ready got in some nice ribbons. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off. <laughs>